All right, good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody doing? More important question, who's a fan of Claude? Woohoo, all right. Well, I hope I can make your day just a little bit better and welcome to our session on building intelligence and financial services. My name is Nick Lin and I lead product for Cloud for Enterprise and our industry solutions, including finance. So today I wanted to just share a little bit more about how Databricks and Anthropic were really working together to transform financial services with AI, with a focus on our integration between Cloud for Enterprise and Unity Catalog. I am also a recovering investment banker and private equity investor, so a lot of these problems are really near and dear to my heart. I've spent years and much, many months really pulling reports, analyses, and generating presentations for my bosses. So I think this is a big part of what really drives my passion for building AI that really solves real problems in financial services. Now onto the agenda, we'll cover a few different topics today. First, really chat a bit about some of the data challenges that are unique to financial services based on our experience. And then really chat through our unified intelligence architecture between Databricks and Anthropic. We'll show you some real use cases and a quick demo, and then wrap up with how we take it from here. All right, for those of you not familiar, Anthropic's mission is to really ensure that the world safely transitions through what we call transformative AI. And that's really across our models, our agent functionalities, and the platform itself. Now, who's used the Claude 4 family of models so far? Show of hands. All right, so you probably know by now that our focus area is really developing frontier model capabilities that are safe and secure by design. Now, on top of those model capabilities, we want to enable all of you to build agentic functionalities for complex workflows, and we're starting with fairly opinionated use cases ourselves for industries like financial services. We also want to be flexible in our deployment models as well. So you can access Claude through our SaaS platform, Claude for Enterprise, our direct first-party API, or through our partners like AWS, GCP, and Databricks. <clears throat> now, everything is really built with enterprise-grade security and safeguards in mind. We're already working with industry leaders across various sub-verticals within financial services. For example, Rocket Mortgage has managed to save 40,000 hours of customer support while improving customer satisfaction. Travelers was also able to improve email classification for service requests, directly boosting conversion. Now, let's talk a bit about what we are really here for, some of the core unique challenges to data when it comes to financial services. Now, based on our work with some of the customers that I just showed, we've learned a few things. First, all of our customers deal with a fairly complex data landscape. There are data sitting in trading systems, risk models, and customer data, often quite siloed from each other. Regulatory regimes like SOX and GDPR require complex and complete audit trails and documentation that's often quite difficult to achieve with AI. And I think ultimately in finance, speed and quality of insight really matter, right? So some of these technical bottlenecks effectively means that by the time you really get to those insights, the opportunity itself has often passed. Now, our vision is quite simple. We really want to enable natural language access to all of your data with proper governance. Now, here's how we're targeting to really solve some of these problems with Claude, plus the intelligence in Databricks and Unity Catalog. Databricks has set up managed turnkey MCP servers to really enable agents to query data and run tools directly within Unity Catalog without needing to host or maintain your own servers. And the governance in Unity Catalog is directly applied and respected so that agents and their end users workflows directly map to the tools and permissions of the end users themselves. Who's experimented with building on MCP today? 
Fantastic. So, you know, I think one of the main benefits of MCP is really standardization. You can write tools once and allow these tools to be used across different agents. And these are agents that you build internally yourselves, third-party agents like Claude. The beauty of it is also that you can consume tools written by others as well. So tools built by others within your organization, as well as tools built by external organizations. Now, Claude here is really an agent that is able to use natural language and our state-of-the-art intelligence to query the information within Databricks using some of the tools that's built into the server, including vector search, some of the functions within Unity Catalog, as well as the AI Power Genie space. Now, what does this mean concretely in terms of some of the core capabilities we're really hoping to provide? First, natural language query. This means that NoSQL is really required. We really want to democratize access to data to both technical and non-technical audiences. You're also able to integrate this information and this data with Claude's built-in agentic functionalities, including deep research, artifacts, as well as many more purpose-built agent workflows we're actively working on. Third, we're able to enable intelligent reporting within Claude itself. So you're able to generate and visualize outputs like investment memos and risk reports automatically in no time. And finally, Claude is really meant to be your single pane of glass to access information not only within Unity Catalog, but also other systems that you work in every single day, including Google Drive, Gmail, SharePoint, and others, all through MCP. Now, here are some of the example use cases that we've seen our financial services customers really succeed in. We'll go over a little bit more detail, some of the investment research workflows, but we've also seen customers really succeed with other use cases like compliance monitoring, trading strategy, optimization, as well as client analytics. All right, let's actually show you all what this looks like in action. So. Let's imagine that I am a hedge fund analyst at a fictitious fund called Momentum Capital. And I want to analyze NVIDIA's historical performance to assess whether I should be adding it to my portfolio. And I have data st scattered across Databricks in terms of NVIDIA's performance. I have you know, investment policies and risk assessment guidelines in Google Drive and past communications with my portfolio manager in my email. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Who has used Claude before, our interface? All right, so hopefully this is fairly familiar, but I would love to show you all extensions of this interface for some of these capabilities that we're demonstrating today. Now, I am essentially asking Claude to really analyze NVIDIA's historical performance and also pull in any other relevant information sitting in Google Drive and Gmail as well. You see Claw start to interpret this natural language query and then starting to use some of the MCP servers that we've built to dig directly into, in this case, Genie Space. As you can tell, it is also now looking into some of the specific communications I've had with my portfolio manager with an email as well. All right, now based on some of the data it was able to retrieve, it is now able to present a initial analysis of NVIDIA's historical performance and how this maps to some of our past trading decisions. Now, next, I really want to see if Claude can help me analyze this information as well. Given my current portfolio, does it make sense to actually add NVIDIA as a position? As you can see, we're now again querying through natural language. I am hoping for Claude to dig into historical trading information, current portfolio information within Databricks, and then compare that to any risk assessment guidelines within Google Docs. All right, as you can see, it is now again querying Genie Space to look into some of this specific information, including current portfolio value, some of the risk limits. It is able to also, again, combine this against the risk assessment guidelines sitting in my Google Docs presented by my firm. Now, based on this information that's been retrieved, it is now 
exactly evaluating my current semiconductor's portfolio exposure and assessing whether it makes sense for us to add NVIDIA as a portfolio position. Now, after doing this analysis, I want to actually start presenting this as an investment decision for my team. So I would love to get cloud support in actually building an investment memo itself. So what you're gonna see here is an artifact. So what Claude is really great at and state of the art at is coding, right? Artifact essentially represents a space for Claude to run code within the browser environment itself. This can be documents, this can be React front ends, these can be HTML as well. Right. As you can see, it's presented a investment memo with exact sums, portfolio analyses, risk assessments, and conclusions and recommendations on what you should actually be doing. And this is ready to go. I can download it, of course. I would probably want to edit it and manipulate it, but it is ready to go to actually present to my investment committee. I think one of the most powerful parts of artifacts, again, is writing code, right? It's to really visualize this information that comes in. So I'm hoping for Cloud to actually help me understand the past historical performance through some charts. As you can see, what it's doing right now is writing Python code and Zoom HTML as well to generate a React front end that I can interact with. Essentially a dashboard that's really monitoring NVIDIA's historical performance. Let's let this run for a bit. As you can see, it's now created a really rich visual artifact, right? Comparing price actions and momentum signal that we found in Databricks, some historical performance and portfolio analyses what my current portfolio actually looks like and some of the trading signals here and what my portfolio concentration looks like. As you can tell, all of that was done with primarily natural language, right? We want to really enable non-technical audiences like investment banking analysts, hedge fund analysts, and private equity analysts themselves to be able to do this and not have to learn a new skill, including SQL. All right. So let's quickly recap what you just saw. Again, natural language query without any necessary knowledge for SQL. We were able to combine both structured and unstructured data across multiple data sources like Google Docs, Gmail, Databricks. I think the beauty of MCP is that these don't have to come out of the box from us or Databricks. We want to enable all of you to be building specific MCP servers that can really be customized for your own needs. So you know, I think about Cloud for Enterprise as really the foundational layer. We're going to be building a modularized agent capabilities that really allow you to construct them into a full end-to-end -end agentic solution. And again, we also saw professional artifacts that can be created within seconds as well. All right. Where do we go from here? So you see my email on the screen. Certainly feel free to email me if you all would like to try Cloth Enterprise and the Databricks integration. Our actual MCP server itself will come online in the next one to two weeks. So please look out for the technical documentation that will come out and meet us throughout today. We're also going to be present at future events like the AWS New York Summit as well. So come find us. We're happy to chat and chat through any problems. And just thank you for your time today. I'm happy to take any questions and I'll stick around for a bit after the session as well. <laughs>